Hey class, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is for you to um, be learning this, or maybe you're learning it in class with me, but today we're going to be graphing in vertex form. So vertex form is the only one we're going to graph this year. Um, hopefully you find this familiar. So all this unit has been on solving quadratic functions, and quadratic functions, when graphed, make parabolas. So let's review, this is here, this shape, this U-shaped graph comes from um, a graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's in standard form. This shape is called a parabola. Now parabolas are symmetric, like you can fold them in half, and they uh, um, are symmetric around this dashed line that runs through the middle of it, and that we call the axis of symmetry. Where the parabola crosses the y-axis, so like in this example right here, that's called the y-intercept. And then it has a maximum or minimum point depending on if it opens up or down. This one opens up, so this minimum point, and that's called the vertex. And then we have where it crosses the x-axis. So as long as there's real solutions, it will have one or two x-intercepts. And so those are called x-intercepts. But like I mentioned, when we solve and we are able to find real solutions, those solutions are the x-intercepts, so sometimes we also call them solutions. Then when we solve for a quadratic function, it's when it equals zero, because the solutions that we get make the equation equal zero, so sometimes we also call them zeros. So x-intercepts, solutions, zeros, and then the last one is called roots. So the four names for x-intercepts include x-intercepts, solutions, zeros, and roots. Here is the quadratic function in vertex form. It might look similar to um, when we solve quadratic functions by square roots. You, you've seen some of the quadratic set up like this. Remember that a, the leading coefficient out in front, tells us if it opens up or down. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. And then it also tells us if it's wide or narrow. Remember, if a is greater than 1, and that's the absolute value of a, which means like um, positive 2 or negative 2, it would still be a more narrow graph. So if a value is bigger than 1, so 3, negative 3, 4, negative 4, bigger than 1, then it is that vertical um, stretch, which means that the graph is going to be more narrow. If the a value is less than 1 or between 0 and 1, so it's a fraction, a half, a third, um, 0.6, a negative a half, then that's going to be the vertical shrink, which means that um, the graph will be wider than the parent function. So a equals 1 is what we call like the standard uh, width. There is no vertical stretch or vertical shrink if a equals 1. <laughs> now, the h value in the vertex, um, oops, I meant to write vertex, is going to be h comma k, similar to um, the when we did absolute value functions, the vertex was h k. So h is the horizontal shift. It's going to move it left and right because h corresponds to the x coordinate of the vertex. And when you graph, you go left and right and then up and down. So k corresponds to the y coordinate. So that's going to be our vertical shift. It's going to move the parabola up and down. So I have a really good Desmos um, calculator thing I'll show you in class. To, so you can kind of visualize that as well. Okay, so graphing in vertex form. First, identify the vertex and then identify the a value, and then we're going to use the parent function to, to graph this. So the vertex form is a, and then parentheses, x minus h squared plus k. 
And so the vertex comes from the HK, so it's gonna be these two values here. Since it's X minus H inside the parentheses, my H is actually going to be negative three. So it's always opposite of inside the parentheses because it's a minus in the original equation. So X minus negative three is what makes this a plus three here. And then plus K, so this would have been plus negative four. So my vertex is negative three, negative four. So opposite of inside the parentheses, the same on the outside. And then the A value is the leading coefficient, the number out front. If there's no number out front, then it's the implied coefficient of one. So now we're going to use the parent function. Since this is a parent, the parabola, our parent function is just y equals x squared. That's the original parabola before any transformations were made to it. So I'm gonna pick the values. Um, I just like to do zero, one, two, three. And then in y equals, I do the parent function value. So I just square those values. So zero, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. And then the a value here is two. So then I take two times my y values, which in this case would be two times those x squared values, two times the middle column. So zero, one times two is two, four times two is eight, nine times two is 18. And then I want to use the first and the last column. Now my zero, zero, that's actually at my vertex point, which means that you know, typically my parent function is at zero, zero, and then the A value is changing the steepness, so it's making it more narrow because it's rising um, to the right one up two instead of up one. So it's going up two. Instead of up four, it's going up eight. So the A value is making it more narrow, but the vertex is what's moving it. So when I'm graphing zero, zero, I'm actually graphing at negative three, negative four. And then I'm going to have to reflect over an axis of symmetry. So I'm going to write my axis of symmetry is going to be this line here at x equals negative 3. So negative 3, negative 4 is my vertex. And I'm going to graph all of these other points from that vertex point because I'm going to treat that like 0, 0. So when I graph the point 1, 2, I'm going to the right one up 2 from my vertex. And then I'm going to reflect it over so you have a point on the other side of the axis of symmetry equal distance away. Then two, eight. So from the vertex, go to the right two, and then up eight. And then reflect that over equal distance. And then I don't think 18 is going to fit on there. I think the farthest I can go up is up 14. But that's good. We have five points here to draw my parabola. This is asking min or max, that means the vertex, and this is going to be a minimum because it is the lowest value. If you think back to the parent function, it's just x squared. So for a quadratic function, you can plug in any x value that you would like, which means that the domain, all the possible input values are all real numbers. I, x is an element of the real numbers. You can plug in all real numbers. And then the range is all your possible output values. So if I look over here, it's the y values at negative 4, and they're all my output values are above that. So my range are all my y values that are greater than or equal to negative 4. The range will always correspond to um, the k value, because that is going to be your vertical shift. Mia, did you finish cleaning your room? Okay, then you can watch TV. Sorry. I'm recording Mia. So it's always going to be, respond to the k value. If it opens up, it'll be greater than. If it opens down, it'll be less than. And then this one is um, a vertical uh, stretch as well, which means it's going to be more narrow. And it's been translated three to the left and four down, if I was to ask you how it compares to the parent function. Okay, so this one, our vertex will be these two points. So it's going to be positive two, positive six. So opposite of the one on the inside, same as the one on the outside. And then a negative out front is like having a negative one. So that will be my A value. I'm gonna use the parent function. So I'm gonna choose the X value, zero, one, two, three. 
And then in the y column, I'm using the parent function, so I'm just squaring those values. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. I'm going to use those values every time. So the first two columns look the same each time. Now the a value in this case is negative 1. So I'm timesing the middle column all by negative 1. So the a value transforms my graph. And in this case, it's going to keep the width the same, but it's going to make these all go down instead of up. So my parabola is going to open um, down. And then I'm going to cross that one out. So when I graph 0, 0, this is actually the vertex point at 2, 6. So go over to 2 and then go up to 6. And then I draw my axis of symmetry. The line here would be x equals 2 is your axis of symmetry here. Um, you could draw the y-axis one if you wanted as well. Then, so 0, 0 is the point 2, 6. Then from that vertex point, I'm going to graph the point 1, negative 1. So to the right 1, down 1. Then reflect it over equal distance from the axis of symmetry. Then to the right, and then down 2, to the right, to the right, 2, down 4. Sorry, then reflect that over. Gives us our y-intercept there, 2. And then to the right, 3, down 9. And then I'm going to reflect that over 3. And draw my parabola. This time it is a maximum point because it is opening down, which means my vertex is the highest point. My domain is all real numbers. X is an element of the real numbers because I can plug in any X that I want. And the range is going to be all the Y values that are less than or equal to 6 because that is my highest output value and everything for output values are below that value. This one had no vertical sh shrink or um, stretch because the A value was 1. But it did open down instead of up, and that's different from the parent function. And then it was also um, translated to the right 2 and up 6 because of the vertex. So from 0, 0, it was moved to the right 2 and up 6. And then it was reflected over the uh, x-axis, or it opened down. Okay, I'll do one more, and then I think 